All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Launch Week for our incredibly powerful new book, Anatomy of Abundance, A Conscious Guide for Creating Prosperity in All Aspects of Life. Today, I get the privilege and honor to interview another one of our incredible co-authors. So I want to introduce you to Dr. Nikki Lewis. Welcome, Dr. Nikki. How are you? Hello. Thank you. I am amazingly well. Thank you. Happy Thanks New for Year. having me. <laughs> yeah. Happy 2024. We More are joy. Here. Yeah, we're finally here. And speaking of here, where are you these days? Because you've been moving around a lot. Right. Yeah. So right now, today, I'm in the U.S. Virgin Islands, oh. like 80 degrees. I went for a dip in the sea this morning and nice. life is, is wonderful. <laughs> yes. Why? Because yeah. you're creating it, right? Right. Exactly. I like <laughs> people say, how do you end up in all these places? I was like, I like the beach. So I go to places where there are beaches. <laughs> yes. What yeah. a wonderful lifestyle. Freedom is one of my core values. Anyone who knows me knows that. So I just so admire your ability and your courage to just move around. I do the same thing to a point, but when you're lugging five children along with you, things change a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's understandable. So let's yeah. dive in. I really want you to share with everyone who's listening who you are and your magic in the world. Wow. I love the way you phrase that. All right. So I am Dr. Nikki Lewis. I wear lots of hats, like most of us. Um, I'm getting into some life coaching. I've been a university professor for 15 years, which mm -hmm. people find hard to believe, but <laughs> yes. And I've been doing some coaching on the side as well as some consulting. And so my magic, I actually asked this question. Um, I was in a program and they were like, ask your friends and family, what is your magic? And some of the responses I got, um, they're like, I can overcome anything. Mm -hmm. I have amazing resilience and um, I can just make things happen. And so that didn't happen overnight. Um, I've been deep into spiritual manifestation, spiritual development, personal development for several years. And I do consider myself a miracle manifester. Mm -hmm. And so I've had miracles in my life and um, I see in social media, a lot of people talking about miracles this year. So I got that message last year and I'm implementing it this year to help people achieve their own miracles in their life. So that's a little it. bit of my magic. Yeah. And it's all about I'm, connection to what you consider your higher source, God, universe, creator, whatever it is for you, um, having that connection and spending time in spirit every day and um, putting out good energy because what put out comes back to you at least 10 tenfold so yes yes and that's such a good segue into talking about your chapter within the book because you speak to the higher law of the i uh, of the declare chapter in the the anatomy of abundance framework and you speak of magic and yes you are magic because you have overcome so much you are a miracle within yourself and you talk about that within your chapter. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit, well, like the, the title of your chapter and just a little bit of an insight or a sneak peek into your story and some of the content that you're sharing in the book. All right, sure. All right, so the name of my chapter is uh, Declare It. And uh, big, I'm sorry, declare it big vision energy. I was going to say big V energy just to kind of give you a little tease in it, but the V is for vision. <laughs> yes, right. So we don't get confused. <laughs> right. And um, so the chapter talks about declare, declare what you want. So it's part of Katrina's amazing framework uh, to declare. And so I'm saying the importance of declaring and having a vision. Um, and in the chapter, I actually guide you through several exercises. I think it's important to um, have hands-on processes. So I, I do want you to read a little bit, but then we're also going to apply what we read. And that'll help you um, have that abundance even faster and in um, higher quantities. So my, my chapter um, has some exercises to do. 
Um, did you want me to share a little bit about one of sure. them now? Is this a good time? Yeah, you can share it. Um, All right. Your... So, okay. So I walk you through, talk about the importance of declaring. Um, a lot of times people have goals, but they're not big goals. So I talk about you should have big goals. And I use the acronym B-I-G, built in God. And even if you're not religious, people were like, oh, you shouldn't put that in the book. You'll turn off some people. So if you're turned off by that, it's okay. You can substitute the G for anything you want it to be. Um, but so many of us put our dreams on the back burner and I don't, I want people to put their dreams front and center. So you may put on the back burner for a little while, but right now it's a new year. There's so much going on in the world. It's really a great time to, um, put your dreams front and center and put yourself first. And so I talk about that declaring a big vision, not just to get by or making it day by day, but we want big vision. And then um, once you have the big vision, you need some steps to move you towards achieving them. So one of the exercises is, um, I'm sorry, to declare. So I have you talk about how you want to feel, have you talk about the kind of life you want, like what would a dream day look like for you? What would you be doing? And then one of the last steps, what are the traits that a person who has that kind of life embodies? Mm -hmm. So um, whatever that dream is, what qualities or characteristics would it take for you to actually have that dream manifest and come true in real life and then a lot of people ask me what does manifest mean they think it's like a woo woo term but it's not um one definition of manifestation is just an answered prayer so something you pray about and then it comes to fruition it materializes or it manifests so manifest is not a dirty word <laughs> uh, all right and so the exercise is actually i give you the prompt and it's I am. And then you complete the prompt with those traits. So what are the traits someone would need to have to accomplish that dream life that you wrote about earlier in my chapter? So you might say, I am dedicated. I am focused. I'm trustworthy. I'm committed. Um, yeah, I'm confident. I'm courageous. And then I just walk you through um, that exercise. So again, that exercise is just to have you identify the traits that are needed to have that dream life that you desire. Yeah. And I love so that. That's one exercise. I love that because we, we, we talk about a lot of things like manifestation and having big vision and all of those things, but you don't really hear people talking about the how, like, how do I manifest? How do I expand my vision? Right. So in speaking yeah. about abundance, the anatomy of abundance, there's a lot of people who will be reading this book who right now, knowingly or unknowingly are functioning and creating from a place of scarcity. So I know you and I, to my knowledge, have not come from like a very abundant mindset childhood or background per se. So how did you go from scarcity mindset to abundance mindset in your own life and specifically in relation to your story and your accident. I would love for you to just kind of share about your personal experience and give a little background on how that abundance mindset helped you through that. All right. Wow. That's a great question. And you're <laughs> right. I didn't grow up with an abundance mindset necessarily. Um, it was just something I observed, you know, yeah. you see different, you're like, hmm. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Wow, that's a good question. I did a lot of reading and again, observations. I think one of my earliest experiences was um, in high school. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to go into all the details, but there was something I desired yeah. and it the odds were against me being able to have it. And then there was something else that was easier, but it wasn't what I really wanted. Mm -hmm. So initially I went for the easy one. I was like, well, at least this, I'll have something. Yeah. But the other one, if, if I lose, I won't have anything. So I went and I, I did that thing for a little while and it only took like five minutes. And I said, no, this is not it. And I quickly ran over to the other thing and stuck with it. I just stuck with it. I practiced, I did what I need to do and I made it. And mm -hmm. so that showed me early on, like, you know, you don't have to settle, go for yes. what you really want and leave, do, do your part. And, and, uh, and then it is more likely to happen. But as far as my accident, wow. So several years, a few years ago, I was on vacation. I was living in Hawaii. 
And I remember when I moved to Hawaii, uh, someone I, I met, a friend of a friend, we were walking on the beach. She said, I'm going to take you to the best beach on the island. It was Oahu. And uh, we went and I said, wow, this is amazing. And I started thinking, where would I go on vacation if I live here? So I asked her, where do you guys go on vacation? You know, if you live in Hawaii, just like another joke is if you live in Hawaii, where do you go for your honeymoon? So, <laughs> sure. like, you know, most people honeymoon want to go to Hawaii. But um, let me get back on track. So um, the point was, I ended up going on vacation to Jamaica mm -hmm. and was in a terrible car accident and was um, car flipped over and all of that. I woke up unconscious in the side of a car, you know, turned upside down, could barely breathe, screamed for help once and then realized I didn't have enough oxygen to do it again. So just kind of like, okay, let me wow. just stay put. And then I lost consciousness again. Some more things happen, but um, fortunately, some strangers got me out of the car. I don't know how they did it because I was stuck. I tried to get out. I couldn't get out. I was pinned in there, but some strangers got me out. And then my recovery was just, I mean, that was a miracle that I survived. Mm -hmm. And then the recovery process is still continuing until today. Um, mm -hmm. So but what I did, I think prayer helped a lot. <laughs> prayer. And then I was grateful. I was grateful that I got out of the car. I was grateful I was alive. Yeah. And even though I had severe injuries, it was like one day at a time, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to make it through this. I, I just believe that. And so that's just one of my stories. Yeah. And actually, the, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so that's one. <laughs> well, and I, think that you, I think that you've answered the question very well and with two very different examples. So the first example, when you were younger and you had two things that you wanted, you ended up settling at first, that lasted for about five minutes and you realized you wanted to go for the other thing. There's a couple lessons there. One lesson is that we have to be courageous enough to actually try and risk failure going for the thing that we really desire. Right? right? The second lesson there is the focus, where your focus goes, energy flows. So what you thought you weren't able to achieve, you went for anyway and ended up achieving that goal. Right. The third thing I want to point out is that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that the attainment of that true desire, once you achieve that, your identity changed because now you know that you can, right? So it exactly. sounds like you talked about these I am, these I am exercise, and it sounds like that may or may not have been your first experience really embodying the I am, I can, right? Energy. Yeah. yeah. So then when that's it came funny. time for you to heal from the accident, I mean, that's a pretty dramatic experience. And a lot of people would have just given up. They would have focused on the pain. They would have focused on why me victimhood and all of the things that they would be perceiving that they'd miss out on, which is totally based in scarcity mindset. But for yourself, you focused on gratitude. You focused on like, oh my God, I'm here, right? So huge lessons in yeah. that, huge lessons on the embodiment and what that looks like to truly shift from scarcity to abundance. So with right. that said, yeah. I do want to also acknowledge that when we first started with this process of enrolling our authors to be a part of this, our conversation was kind of wobbly. It wasn't like the rest of the authors where it was like a hell yes or a hell no. And a, like, we were kind of in this dance, right? <laughs> we were kind of yeah. in this dance where it was like, should I, shouldn't I? Because you still have some recovery happening with the brain injury. And I think you were in the middle of a move and just a lot of things were going on. So give us a little insight into your thought process for why you moved forward and also just what this process or write in this chapter and how uh, has been like and how you've kind of changed on the other side. Right. Okay. Yes, you're right. Um, so, and this leads to another point in my recovery, even I didn't do it alone. I, I was willing to ask for help. I had help. I had support. So even now, so with the book, my friends who like have some people who like serve as accountability partners, kind of like stay on me. Like, did you do this? How's that to do list going? And, you know, I use coaches as well that I hire. Yeah. So when I mentioned the book, 
everybody said no <laughs> you have too much going on don't put anything else on your plate like no do wait do another book do it later but for now you know you got some other priorities and so I thought about it and I was like no I've, I know I'm gonna write a book eventually so why not just do it now as part of a team mm -hmm. I really felt a connection with you um, when we spoke when I saw the video when I learned about your brand. I said, I think this will be a good time to kind of dip my toe into the book writing yeah. process. And I've written book chapters in the academic world. As I said, I was uh -huh. a professor. So I've right. done it yeah. in that aspect, but not in this uh, personal development or in outside of academia. It's my first book outside of academia. And uh, yeah, I just felt like it was time. I listened to my intuition and that's something I coach about, um, how to improve your intuition. And so I listened to my intuition and just said, this is it. And I didn't know how it was gonna get done. And um, as I mentioned in a social media post, I, I think I missed every deadline, sorry. But um, but in the end, it kind of came through. I needed some support. Um, yeah, I, I, I missed about that post, but I'm going to go back and look at it now. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so it just seemed like a great team to work with, um, to be a yeah. part of this book, and that's on the cover, and I'm like, okay, that resonates with me. <laughs> I know, it was like this science. great unfolding, science. the whole process was a great unfolding, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. And I so, love that. Yeah. I love also that you just shed light on another very important point, which is we have to listen to our own intuition. While it's important to have community and supporters and coaches and teachers and all of these things, it's also very important to know that you're the main source of your wisdom and that you always know what's best for you. Because sometimes right. no matter how evolved or spiritual or intellectual people are, their personal limitations may be projected onto you. So maybe That's for true. them outside looking in, you had too much going on and you needed to just focus on those things. But for you, you're like, yeah, I got a lot going on, but once I decide to do something, it's going to get done. So let's go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's abundant. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, it well, that's abundance. And it's also yeah. knowing when, when to say yes and when to say no. Right. right? Yeah. So obviously, and, and believe, and believe mm -hmm. it. Obviously, this yeah. was aligned because you did it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So then in your experience, obviously, you know, mostly uh, about your own chapter, your own experience, but even in the interactions that you've had with the other authors and what you know about all of the content of this book, why should people go to go dot? patrinawisdom.com forward slash abundance and buy the book. Yes. Yeah, so the authors, the co-authors are amazing. I have inter interactions with a few of them. And um, anytime I posted a question, people were quick to respond. You were quick to respond. Yeah. Yes. And we're really building a community. Yes. Um, there's going to be a big book launch party. I think there's talks of like um, maybe a book club yes, and other activities. Mm -hmm. I've offered to have some kind of event here in St. Croix where we promote the book and people can buy it and we come celebrate yeah. the accomplishment. And so it's a movement. Yeah. I get the yeah. feeling that the Nine of Abundance is a movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, for people, I think it'll meet people wherever they are. So even if you're a beginner or if you're more advanced, um, there's something for everyone. And just the diversity of the co-authors, the different perspectives, the different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And I think um, if you do anything connected to the book, if you follow anything with us, you'll definitely benefit in some way. We've been talking in my interviews with the different authors, you know, it's really come to all of us, this uh, knowingness that this book will become something that people go back to minimally every year kind of like a think and grow rich type book, right? Where it becomes a reference each year or even better every quarter that you go back and check in with and kind of go through those, um, the framework steps and revisit and work on different parts of yourself. So I'm really excited to get the book in the hands of as many people that we can. And um, you were a perfect fit. You are a perfect fit for the book because 
the book is all about merging and integrating the higher law with the foundational law. And you literally epitomize mm -hmm. that. You're a professor and you have your doctor, all these different things. And yet you've also developed this very spiritual grounded side of yourself. And so you're also an embodiment of what that looks like in action. Because it's one right. thing to sit on a mountain to meditate all day and be all spiritual and enlightened. It's another thing to then bring that into your physical experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. People always ask me, how do you do it? You, you know, to get a job at this place, you get a job at that place, vacation this place, vacation <laughs> that place. And yeah, I'm happy yeah. to share. <laughs> yeah, it's a lifestyle. So with that said, share with everybody any clothing, clothing, <laughs> closing thoughts that you might have and also share with them how they can connect with you to get to know you better. Okay. So I'd say as far as closing thoughts, um, something I heard just this morning was the idea of elevated expectations. So mm -hmm. again, raise what you're expecting, what outcomes you're expecting, the quality of the outcome. Uh, just believe that the higher, the best thing is possible for you and that you deserve it. Um, part of it is deserving it. Sometimes people don't think they deserve better, but you do. God created you um, to be the head and not the tail and the lender, not the borrower. So um, yeah, just believe, have elevated expectations, like want more, want better, want bigger and believe that you can have it. And then also um, what you get if, is a result of what you put out. So whatever you put out, it's going to come back to you at least tenfold. So if you put out drama, you put out hatred, it's going to come back to you. So just encourage everybody, even if you're stuck and you're down, find a way to help others. And then that will increase abundance for you, actually. Giving, you have to give, you have to help, you have to serve, and then you'll be more abundant yourself. Absolutely. And then as far as reaching me, yeah, I'd say uh, Dr. Nikki 808 is the best way to reach me on Instagram and Facebook. And that's D-R period N-I-K-K-I 808. And that's Instagram and Facebook, Dr. D-R period N-I-K-K-I 808. And I'm also on TikTok, probably with something similar, same, same. Uh, <laughs> so are you encouraging them to just slide in your DMs and say hi? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, DMs are open. Just slide on in, and you'll find more information there, like links to uh, connect me if you're. Um, but that's a good place to start. Okay, perfect. I love that, and I'm really grateful that you were able to sit with me today. I don't know what time it is in uh, the Virgin Islands, but I'm sure it's not the same time as we're in here right now. Um, so yeah, I appreciate you. I'm really happy that you said yes to the project and I'm excited to share you and all the co-authors uh, in this incredible work. So if you haven't already gone out and purchased your copy, purchase a copy for yourself, but also share the book with friends and family. Bur purchase multiple couple copies. I can't speak English today. Um, it is literally the greatest gift that you can give. We appreciate you for tuning in. Tune in again tomorrow where we'll have more interviews. We're releasing about two to three interviews per day with our co-authors. So this is an, an opportunity to really get to know them more intimately and get a sneak peek into the magic that is Anatomy of Abundance. Have a good one. Thank you, Dr. Nikki. <laughs> Thank you, Katrina.